I'm going to show you C-Sharp Express, show you some of the features. Um, I created a simple application that uh, pull, uh, pulls images from Google. Oh, cool. So uh, I'll start showing cool. the app. Um, first thing I'll do is probably just run it. Um, again, I'm using C-Sharp Express here, so there's nothing fancy going on. But uh, we have a search text, and I'll search for you. Just type in text, and uh, we'll click Go. Um, pulls the images back into list view and then we see all the images that were pulled from Google so let's see we can select this image for example open it up and get the bigger screen for this image and we can actually also set this as our wallpaper so if you really want to see something scary that's uh yeah <laughs> so uh, we can do it with basically any image. So you can, you know, other than people or yourself, you can also search for things like a sunset. And this is retrieving images. So there's a nice sunset. We'll set that as our wallpaper. And that's a lot nicer. So there's our basic application. What we're going to do is uh, show you some of the things that we've added for uh, C Sharp Express and really for uh, WIDBY for asynchronous programming. So, as you saw, what we're actually doing is screen scraping Google, Google's images. And Google Images doesn't have, um, Google has a web service, but it doesn't expose their Google Images uh, through a web service. So, what we actually do is screen scrape the HTML, pull the images, and then uh, load them into this image list. So, what I'll do is just walk through uh, the code here. And in particular, one of the things we've done is we've added this control called Background Worker. And Background Worker, you can just drag and drop it onto a form. And what it's going to do is basically uh, call those Im call that images all the images um, and pull them down asynchronously. So uh, we have a couple of properties here. Our wor worker reports progress true, and that's how we're populating this uh, progress bar here. So there's really three met methods uh, to get to um, asynchronous programming. So one is do work, and this is actually what's going to call another thread and have it do work. Um, the other thing is the progress changed, uh, which I'll show in a second, but basically just reports change back to that progress bar and the run worker completed. So it'll go do its own work and report back when it's finally completed. So we go into our progress changed. Um, we're basically doing base, uh, setting the progress bar value to whatever the percentage of my application is done. So let's go to, I'm just going to scroll up here. And we see our button search. So when I click on that button search, I do a couple of things to basically uh, clean up, clear out the list view, and clear out the image view. And then I call this one method the run worker async. What it's going to do, and I'm passing in whatever the user typed into the text box, it's going to create another thread and actually call that thread and do all the work for me. So let me uh, jump to there. So we have our do work method. I pass in the event arg and all all I'm doing is retrieving a list of the URLs and the list of the images. So I create a dictionary that's the list of the URLs and an image class. And I just get images from Google and I pass in whatever the user typed into the text box that I passed in as an argument. So if I for example I can go to definition here. Um, so here's my get images from Google. It's going to return a list of the URLs. And here's the way Google's images are expected. And what we can do is actually just to, what we're doing is basically screen scraping, running a reg regular expression against the HTML, and returning a list of URLs. But what I can actually do is just set a breakpoint here. And I'll click Run. And just type this again. We'll stop on our breakpoint. One of the, the difficulties with programming or debugging your code was a lot of times you didn't understand what values were um, set to what. So did this, did this uh, actually call Google OK? I can, in my HTML, well, first things, I actually, we've added um, IntelliSense to the watch window down here. So if I just start typing, you see HTML is added. And we see that it's actually called some sort of, see that huge value that we can't really see well. Well, we've actually added something called a vi uh, visualizers. And I can run an HTML visualizer. What it's going to do is show me in memory, this is actually what's called what was called to our web page. And this is what Google returns. So you can actually see that the value is passed into the search. And here are the images, of course, the image URLs um, 
aren't aren't absolute, so they're broken links. But you can see, literally, this is in memory on a breakpoint. I can see how this application was running and how it sent those values. So, so basically, what we do is pass those values. We run it through a regular expression that basically pulls out images tags and just adds them to a list if they're in the correct format. So we will just run here, and we see our progress bar has changed. Let's go back into our code. So what we can do is call the method report progress, and that updates the progress bar. And then here's where our real code happens, where we're basically calling in and loading each individual image. Um, we create using the system net classes. We call the web using the image URL. And then image has this thing called from stream. And it can basically read from a stream. So we're going to read from the web stream. And whatever that image GIF uh, pulls in, we load it into an image and basically add it to our code. So it's pretty basic stuff. Uh, what we can do there uh, now is actually just start cleaning up our code and show you some of the code focus features. So if we go back, um, we can actually select this code that was basically doing common things like clearing out the images, set, resetting the progress bar value. You can select this code, right click, refactor, and select extract method. And this is one of our refactorings that basically extracts a method. Um, and I'm going to call this um, reset form. And this way, my button click, rather than doing all this stuff there, I can call this somewhere else. I can actually um, go to definitions as I did before, or I can actually use a new window called the code definition window. And I'll just pin this here. If we mouse over our code, if you can see this, whenever we click onto code, it'll actually show me the definition of this code. So if I want to, for example, find out where uh, reset form is, is called, I can actually see this without having to go to the definition itself. So if I do there, then we actually see our, our reset form code. So simple stuff. Let's uh, do a couple other things. If we want to add uh, um, some error handling code, we can select our code, choose IntelliSense, and choose surround with. And what we're going to do is surround it with a try catch statement. So we'll have some error handling. I'll just select that, and we'll do six system dot exception. We'll just call it exception ex. So what this does is automatically adds. Let's uh, unpin this. Automatically adds this into a try catch statement. Um, another thing is maybe when an error actually happens, I want to be able to log this error. So um, I'll just type log error and pass in that exception object. Now the thing is, I actually haven't written a log error method, but I can tell Visual Studio, and Visual Studio is smart enough to know I haven't written a log error method. It'll tell me, do you want to generate the method stub for log error? And I'll say, yeah, Visual Studio, go ahead and do that. And if I jump, um, I just say, go to definition. The smart thing is, Visual Studio dumps it out. It knows it doesn't have a return value. And it knows it's passing in an exception data type. So it automatically does this. If you're writing a lot of code, it's great to be able to just generate these method stubs and be very productive here. So um, it's a great feature. Definitely love it. Um, and in this case, we can, for example, just type uh, debug dot write line and write out our value. ex dot message. So, oh, actually, one of the things, if I, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and actually delete the system diagnostics namespace and jump back to our code. You see all the data types. This doesn't give me the green data type, so it basically says it's not a known value. If I simply uh, mouse over here, Visual Studio says, I'm not sure what that data is. It'll actually tell me, hey, you're trying to use something, but you haven't added the right reference. It'll tell me if you just, this code will work if you add a using statement to the top or if you just add the fully qualified name. It's a great feature. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell it to add the using statement automatically. We see the code changes, so now my code is correct. So it's a re really powerful, really productive uh, tool. Let's go ahead and just do a, a couple other things here. Um, one of the other nice features is, if I just comment this out, is our, our snippets. IntelliSense code snippet expansions here. Um, if I just type for each, if I ever wanted to use a for each or I'm new to programming, 
Um, these are basically extensible XML files that, that are boilerplate snippets of code. So I just, just type tab, and I get this snippet here that's asking me how I want to fill this in. So I'm going to say the data type is a string key. And here's another great part. It knows uh, what collections are in scope and asks me which collection do I want to use. Um, in our case, I want to use Google Images dot keys. And if I just click enter here, it takes me to this code. And you know, I'll just copy and paste our code back here and unformat that. So basically, if you're doing a lot of these snippets, you can actually format these, pass them in as your own parameters. All those yellow things you can pass in as your own parameters, customize them, create your own, share them uh, with other developers. So just another. Uh, great productivity feature. Um, another thing is this progress bar is called progress bar one. It isn't really a descriptive name. So you can go and take code, and I'm sure you've run into people use uh, single letter variable names. You can go ahead and just rename their code. So we can use uh, call the rename refactoring here. And I'm going to call this Google progress bar. And the nice thing is it'll tell me all the reference changes, search in uh, comments, and strings, so we'll see the reference changes. You see, just making that one change, um, it first of all shows me all the, the C Sharp code files that were referencing it. And I can go in and actually jump through, find every single reference. It shows me all the comments where it's used in all the strings. So just click Apply, and all the references are automatically changed uh, to the name. So it's a great feature. I can, for example, um, uh, jump to this and actually do this in line as well. So if I just type um, Google progress bar 2, you'll see we get a smart tag. And the smart tag basically allows me to do the same exact thing. So rather than needing to say right click, refactor on a type, I can, for example, just uh, type it in line and our smart tags will pick up that you've changed and ask you whether you want to run the refactoring. So I'll just rename with preview and I see that window again and click OK. So there's our basic. Uh, application. We saw a lot of the uh, code focus features uh, available. If I, for example, wanted to find all references that were used in this code and you don't want to use the refactoring, you can as well. And there's a whole slew of features we haven't been able to show, but uh, the great feature, the, the key thing to take away from this example is we have a lot of features for code focus development. C Sharp Express is a great way to get your hands around development. And um, in this particular example, you see some of the rad features for um, asynchronous programming.